Hi friends, welcome to Law Excellence Today's Current Affairs for Beginners. So, as a part of providing you three main questions daily, these are the today's three questions, three main questions. So, try to answer these questions, and so you yourself, you put you put your model answers for these three questions in our website called Civil Prep. So, please log into it and. upload your model answers the students yourselves only will review these model answers and we are also going to review these model answers to give you the best guidance from us thank you now come to yesterday's questions and this is the first question which among the following threats are decimating so decimating means what kill or destroy the lord's population so which among the following threats are decimating the indian bustard populations so one hunting yes it is correct habitat destruction yes it is also correct intensification of agriculture and power lines and these are the four human activities so in the areas of the and this particular indian bustard populations because of that it's somewhat these are the threats to decimating the indian bustard populations so answer is d 1 2 3 and 4 are correct now come to the second question which among the following arab states border the persian gulf see when you have a look on this particular map here it is called it is the persian gulf so it is a bordering with the countries like kuwait see you you like a saudi arabia and here there is island like bahrain and qatar uae and oman these are the countries who are sharing the border with the persian gulf so except over here like yemen so yemen is not sharing the border with persian gulf so we can easily remove the the option like 4 and the other 1 2 3 5 or here sharing the border with this particular persian gulf so answer is 1 2 3 and 5 so that is c now come to today's articles so cyclone petai so recently we witnessed this particular cyclone here you come to know the what is a cyclone you come to know the only the core parts of all these articles means we are not analyzing the article here because it is very the core part will be very useful for the beginners so it it comes under the part like a gs1 geography the second one sale of drugs online so under economy so what are the like a pros and the cons of this particular sale of drugs uh, online so because it held like uh, recently we had this news uh, so like uh, so high courts madras high court ban this particular sale or selling of the drugs online next uzwala yojana pradhan mantri uzwala yojana and fourth one biofuel what are the advantages what is the importance of biofuel currently and about the option called nota none of the above option so on the ballot as like in the on the evm machines like evm machine evms and sixth one 1984 sikh riots what is the background of this particular sikh riots 1984 and what about the cog controller and auditor general and nfsc national food security act so these are the topics related to these uh, so these are the uh, subjects or paper in our so general studies so to related to the these are the these articles now come to the first article <coughs> cyclone petai crosses the coast near kakirada in ap so you should know here so you will come to know only about the what is like here cyclone so what are the causes of it and what are the effects of it hit now now when you come to the the some facts over here so cyclonic storm petai so it is the sixth named cyclone of 2018 this year it was the sixth cyclone in the northern part of indian ocean so in the northern part of indian ocean indian ocean means we have a two parts so arabian sea and 
so b o b bay of bengal region and this is what called like a so indian ocean in this particular northern part of indian ocean means uh, these are the regions where we had witnessed in this year so there were six cyclones with uh, this cyclone called pathai and those are sagar the first cyclone sagar mekunu luban titli so and gaza these are the five cyclones and the pathai was the sixth cyclone so hit the the eastern coastal region of the india and started from the northern part of indian ocean now when you come to the pathai and the cyclone was emerged as a a deep depression now what is called deep depression so deep depression depression means what it is a low pressure point and this low pressure point at set at center this creates a cyclone cyclone means it is the zone of convergence it is the zone of convergence with a net inflow of air taking place so net inflow of air so there is a inflow of air when there is a inflow of means when we can expect there is a inflow of air if there is a low pressure at center then high pressure winds and all winds which are so always having a movement from high pressure to low pressure so means high pressure winds always moving towards the low pressure points and because of that low pressure at center so it it forms like all winds were whirling around the low pressure points and creates a cyclonic cyclone or a, a storm like weather so this low pressure is because of high temperature over the region so high temperature or low pressure low temperature or high pressure and that high temperature point are also called a low pressure point and that zone is called zone of convergence so cyclone can be defined as it is a zone of convergence means cyclone is a wind system because so many winds are converging towards a low pressure point that is why cyclone is a wind system with low pressure at center or it is a wind system with having a zone of convergence of winds again so now what are the causes here so majorly it is caused by a combination of strong winds driving water on shore and the lower atmospheric pressure in a, a tropical cyclonic regions so normally cyclones are called over the regions like a tropical regions in the globe and there so the main cause is because of low pressure points it is the main cause of the cyclone so tropical cyclones are like a, giant engines that use warm moisture air as a fuel so what is the fuel over here so fuel for the cyclonic storms are simply warm moisture air so warm moisture air moisture air is the fuel of the cyclone see warm moisture means what because of because of the high temperature so previously there was a high temperature it creates the more moisture and high temperature creates low pressure and that facilitates the formation of a cyclone that is called a fuel of the cyclonic winds that is why they form only over warm ocean waters near the equator so near the equator so we can expect the high temperature regions means low pressure belts or low pressure regions and it is always facilitated in the creation of the cyclonic storms and this is what causes of the cyclone now come to effects we know that the cyclonic effects like heavy rain it may create a strong winds and there are some large storm surges at landfall and at and it may it may sometimes we can call them like a tornadoes over the regions like a atlantic regions so north and south atlantic regions in the regions of the equatorial regions and these these are the some effects of this cyclone now come to the second 
सो हाई कोर्ट बैन ई फॉर्मसीज मल लीगल रिकोर्स सो हियर ई फॉर्मसीज सो इट कम्स अंडर द कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक सो जी एस थ्री एकोनमी सो वेन यू टेक द इकोनॉमिक परस्पेक्टिव देर शुड बी वॉट गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस सेलिंग एंड बाइंग ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेस सो वी कैन सी इन दैट परस्पेक्शन लाइक इफ यू टेक सो नॉर्मल गुड्स एंड फॉर्मस लाइक ए मेडि मेडिकेशन और मेडिसिन सो देर इज अ डिफरेंस लाइस इन अपटेनिंग ए मेडिकल प्रेस्क्रिप्शन फॉर फार्मास्यूटिकल गुड्स सो डेफिनेटली देर इज अ डिफरेंस इन सेलिंग फार्मास्यूटिकल्स एंड अदर रिटेल प्रोडक्ट्स सो हियर द डिफरेंस इज वॉट इट लाइस इन अपटेनिंग अ मेडिकल प्रिस्क्रिप्शन फॉर फार्मास्यूटिकल गुड्स मीन्स फॉर फार्मास्यूटिकल गुड्स देर शुड बी ए मेडिकल प्रिस्क्रिप्शन नॉट लाइक अदर रिटेल गुड्स एंड दैट इज वॉट मेजर डिफरेंस सो वही so the organizations or like high court or supreme court always concern about the so these particular selling of the pharmaceutical goods through online so it is ultimately for the welfare of the society now so in case of for example a serious ailments certain drugs will not be sold without prescription means here the prescription is is the main important so to boost the online markets so if we have a more online markets definitely there should be a proper prescription for uh, for some serious ailments so thus people can register themselves so if there is a prescription then so people can register themselves upload their prescriptions pay the dues against a receipt and the medicines can be home delivered and it is a safe process if there is a prescription it is one of the a major concern and a major challenge to boost the this particular online markets so by for selling the pharmaceutical goods so the company should also be in touch with the drug controllers in different states to comply with the existing guidelines now we will see what are the pros and cons of the so online pharmacies now when you come to the pros so like a pros first the pros like cost because here cost is a great benefit when using an online pharmacy so many of the online pharmacies provide deals on medications that drastically cut your costs means in addition online pharmacies often provide free shipping so there is a free shipping and there is a low cost low cost of the goods selling on the online because of more competition the reduced price in addition to the free shipping make online pharmacies much less costly and much more appealing if you are if you are on a budget so so if you are making a budget right if you are if you are having a low low money then at that time this online pharmacies are so online pharmacies are somewhat very benefit so this is one of the pro of the particular online pharmacies and the second one is convenience so buying prescriptions from online pharmacies is extremely easy and convenient so rather than going out of your way to pick up your prescription while the pharmacy is open so you are able to order medications at any time and have the have them delivered right to your home and this is one of the most so important benefit of this particular online pharmacies even if you do not live near town or unable to leave your home so you are still able to benefit from great prescription medications with the online pharmacies next and the third one is information so not only are you able to find many great prescriptions on online pharmacies you can find a plethora information means a lot of information you can get so you are able to read about certain diseases and medications also so in the online pharmacies uh, websites now and the next one private so here private in the sense here some online pharmacies are private you know so majorly online pharmacies are private you have the freedom buying the prescription you need without having to announce your problem to the world means uh, there is a private uh, like a the maintaining of secrecy over so through these particular online pharmacies if you have questions about any concerns you have you are able to ask anonymous questions and avoid embarrassment 
so avoid embarrassment now now come to the cons of online pharmacies like cons like reliability so if there are pros means there should be a cons and the cons like a reliability so here reliability means like not all online pharmacies are reliable like see so not all of the online like all uh, online pharmacies are actually licensed some unlicensed pharmacies also there so over those unlicensed like in those particular uh, with that particular unlicensed uh, pharmacies so you need you may not be available when you need it like it's like some prescriptions may not be available and there may be a shipping delays so with this unlicensed uh, pharmacies and these are some negatives of of the unlicensed pharmacies because like it is comes under reliability and second one safety so not online pharmacies are care about your health so and so even today so in the world so the neighbor also may not concern about your health means when you come to the online pharmacies some online pharmacies may not may not care about your health many of them are out to make money and may sell you dangerous medications it's somewhat uh, there is a possibility and this is especially true if you do not need a prescription to buy the medication so it's very very concern so it is somewhat a con so in the online pharmacies and make sure you are buying from a, a reputable source before you use you use any online pharmacy medication and and the next one hidden costs so here hidden costs means while many online pharmacies provide low costs and free shipping some online pharmacies have hidden costs like that quickly add up like a, a common hidden fees include ordering fees account fees and consultation fees and there some hidden fees also there and it may lead to higher costs and next your information is very very important means some unauthorized and some unlicensed pharmacies some unauthorized pharmacies so they have a like a somewhat they do not have great uh, privacy policies and they may sell your information so in addition their protection methods may not be great making your financial information obtainable by a hacker sometimes your financial information so might uh, so attacked by hacker and your information may can be uh, sold out and this is what some other con so or negative of this particular online pharmacies so with this concerning of these cons so recently high court so had banned so banned these particular e pharmacies now come to the next article lpg scheme to cover poor people so here the most concerning word is uzwala yojana means here what is pradhan mantri uzwala yojana pmuy now now come to the pmuy so when it was launched it was launched in so may 2016 so launched by the union government so with a tagline called swachh indan behtar jeevan swachh indan so behtar behtar jeevan and this is what tagline of this pm uy it aims to at it aims at providing clean cooking fuel to poor households clean cooking fuel to poor households who are otherwise called vulnerable to various health hazards associated with indoor air pollution and bringing in qualitative charges in living standards to avoid the indoor air pollution so this is a scheme so was introduced it is one of the main objective or aim of this particular scheme right now come to the implementation so who, who is implementing means which, which ministry is implementing this particular pmuy scheme so implemented by ministry of 
मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पेट्रोलियम एंड नेचुरल गैस मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पेट्रोलियम एंड नेचुरल गैस थ्रू इट्स ऑयल मार्केटिंग कंपनीज सो दैट्स कॉल्ड ओ एम सीज लाइक आई वो सी एल इंडियन ऑयल कॉर्पोरेशन लिमिटेड सो आई वो सी बी पी सी एल भारत पेट्रोलियम कॉर्पोरेशन लिमिटेड एंड एच पी सी एल हिंदुस्तान पेट्रोलियम कॉर्पोरेशन कॉर्पोरेशन लिमिटेड सो थ्रू दीज नेटवर्कस सो ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर्स अक्रॉस दी कंट्री सो थ्रू दीज कंपनीज दिस मिनिस्ट्री इज रनिंग दिस पर्टिकुलर स्कीम सो इट इज इंप्लीमेंटिंग और इम्प्लीमेंटेशन इज डन इन ऑल दी स्टेट्स एंड यूटीज थ्रू इट कैश असिस्टेंस इज गिवन टू बेनिफिशरीज सो द बेनिफिशरीज विल विल गेट द कैश कैश असिस्टेंस सो इन दम ऑफ लके सो बेनिफिशरीज टू टू गेट ए डिपोजिट फ्री न्यू कनेक्शन डिपोजिट फ्री इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट सो डिपोजिट फ्री न्यू कनेक्शन इट इज फर्स्ट वेलफेयर स्कीम इंप्लीमेंटेड बाई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पेट्रोलियम सो इट इज द फर्स्ट वेलफेयर स्कीम इंप्लीमेंटेड बाई मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पेट्रोलियम नो कम टू द बेनिफिशरीज वो आर द बेनिफिशरीज ऑफ पी एम यू वाई द बेनिफिशरीज ऑर सोशियो इकोनॉमिक कैस्ट सेंस मीन्स अकॉर्डिंग टू सोशियो इकोनॉमिक कैस्ट सेंसेस एस सी 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 so from these particular cash census and in such cases where names are not covered so if the names are not covered in secc 2011 so then the the beneficiaries are somewhat identified from a seven categories which include scst categories households beneficiaries of anchodaya anna yojana anchodaya anna yojana and pm yay so so like gramin pm yay gramin so like avas yojana gramin forest dwellers most backward classes resident of islands or river islands and tea garden and ex tea garden tribes these are the seven category categories so they are getting the benefits of pm uy and ultimately so the beneficiaries are taken or identified through a socio economic cast census 2011 tar when you come, now, now come now come to targets so initially government had set a target to provide a deposit free lpg connections under pm uy to 5 crore bpl households below poverty line households by 31st march 2019 so because of like a considering considering its huge success government had revised the, revised the target to 8 crores from 5 crores to 8 crores so with a so a more budgetary allocation now come to the next order so iaf plane takes to the air on blended biofuel no so here the important term is biofuel and now biofuel why biofuel case came into existence what is the importance of the biofuel now so biofuel importance is like so now what is the recent rise in oil prices we are seeing the or we are witnessing the rise in oil prices so with this growing concern and and that too because of using of petroleum diesel kerosene and all these uh, fossil fuels because of these fossil fuels so there may be a increasing of carbon emissions like a co2 level will increase it may lead to global warming and because of this one also and this is most concern point and increasing of the prices or the the second concern point over the petroleum and diesel so in the history or in the so in the past so we had the a decreasing of a decreasing trend there was a decreasing of prices in the these fossil fuels but currently there is a increasing trend of these fossil fuels and because of these two factors or concerns now so we are shifting to the biofuel and that is the concern or importance of the biofuel or requirement of the biofuel 
so biofuel is a derived from so it is derived from biomass so that is like a plant or a algae material or a animal waste so such a feed stock material can be replenished readily so the biofuel is considered to be a, a source of renewable energy unlike fossil fuels such as petroleum coal and natural gas so biofuel is commonly advocated as a cost effective and environmentally so it's somewhat alternative to petroleum and other fossil fuels particularly within the context of rising petroleum prices and increased concern over the contributions made by fossil fuels to global warming so and this is what importance of the biofuel now come to the next topic so not a decisive factor see not a decisive factor means here not i is currently it is not a decision factor so that is why it it is in the news now so what is nota here on which country used first we will see the different aspects of this particular nota so what is a nota nota means none of the above none of the above so it is for short now it is also known as we can take it as a ignestol so means in the evm machines so we have uh, so many a rose and with the final we have a nota at the end of this particular so at the end of the mission we have a nota option means against all these options there is a nota means that is why it is also called against all so it is designed to allow the voter to indicate disapproval of the candidates in a voting system so it is particular design to allow the voter to indicate disapproval of the candidates in a voting system now which country used first specifically can can be said that uh, india is used in 2008 2009 and this was the first for the first time in the world so the election commission told to supreme court at that time so it was somewhat wished to offer the voter for none of the above option on the ballots now when was first nota used in india so it was in 2013 september 27 so in, on september 27 2013 so the supreme court of india ruled that so the right to register none of the above vote in elections should apply and ordered the election commissions to provide such a button in the electronic voting machines noting that it would increase participation now com- currently what is the use of the nota in india so it is a ballot option that voter can choose to apply instead of giving their vote to any of the contesting candidates now in 2009 when you take the election commission of india had asked the supreme court to offer this option on electoral ballots but the government has opposed to it so so currently we are using the so nota so there was a option in the previous elections also but it is there was a trending uh, uh, decreasing growth means there is a decreasing growth of uh, voting the nota option or selecting the nota option by the people so in the different states in their particular different general elections means there is a so um, means candidates not using more the nota options now what if nota gets majority in india and this is our most important question here so nota is a not a candidate therefore it can never win any election so at present there is no rule about the fate of the election if nota gets majority of votes so for example if nota get the majority of votes then the candidates who gets highest votes after nota wins the election so out of all the rows or out of all the so parties so are getting the votes if nota gets majority of votes then so the second position occupied by the party so which gets the majority of votes and which elected so as like a so majority party and this is about nota come to the next article the shadow of 1984 riots so here the 1984 anti secretes anti secretes so it is somewhat known as 1984 sik massacre so it was a series of organized 
programs against Sikhs in India by anti-Sikh mobs. So what? Uh, so notably, we can say that Congress party members. So in response to the assassination of Indira Gandhi by Sikh bodyguards, and this is the major issue of this anti-Sikh riots, nineteen eighty four. But now, when you come to the background, so what is the source of this particular anti-Sikh riots? The source is when when you go to the nineteen eighties. So at that time. So there was a armed Sikh separatist Khalistan movement, which sought independence from India. From India, they wanted so independence. So now, in July nineteen eighty three, the Sikh political party Akali Dal's president Harchand Singh Longowal had invited Jarnail Singh Bin Subindran Wale, the name called. so bindran wale to take up residence in golden temple complex to avoid arrest so bindran wale was so what he was following the armed struggle for separate country from india and that was like a sikh separate khalistan movement he used to kill so many hindus and even he murdered or he killed 39 sikhs who opposed to bindran wale so because of this events so in uh, indira gandhi the, the then prime minister so ordered the uh, army to start a operation blue star because of this particular incidents operation blue star came into existence now what is the operation blue star here it was an indian military operation so carried and it was ordered by prime minister indira gandhi to remove militant religious leader called bindran wale and his armed militants from the buildings of harminder sahib complex in amritsar so bindran wale died and militants were removed from the temple complex the military action in the temple complex was criticized by six so because it was their so their uh, tradition so it was their uh, uh, belief that so other religion so should not enter into the parti this particular complex or golden temple we are now calling it so because of that so it was it was some military action in the temple complex was so was uh, it's completely criticized by six worldwide so we had interpreted it as an assault on sikh religion so and after that four months after this particular operation So on thirty first October nineteen eighty four, Indira Gandhi was assassinated in so vengeance by her two Sikh bodyguards. So the name called Satwant Singh and so Biant Singh, and these were the two Sikhs who murdered the so who shot down the Indira Gandhi, so in Delhi, and this is about the shadow of nineteen eighty four article. It's called again nineteen eighty four Sikh riots. to so come to the final article called so making every citizen an auditor so here so the most important terms are like cog and nfsa no so controller and auditor general of india so it is an authority established by so under article 148 of the constitution so which audits all receipts see the main aim is so the main aim is to audit the all receipts and expenditure of the government of india and the state governments including those of bodies and other entities substantially financed by the government so if there are any other bodies which are financially substantiated by the government of india then those bodies also should be under audit of the cog so the cog is also the external auditor of government owned corporations and conducts the supplementary audit of government companies so government corporations and the government companies also will be under cog <coughs> like uh, that uh, non banking non insurance companies so in which union government has an equity share of at least 51% or subsidiary companies of existing government companies now the reports of the cog are taken into consideration by the public accounts committee and committees on public undertakings public accounts committee and committees on public undertakings 
which are a special committees in the parliament of india and the state legislatures and the cog is also the head of the indian audits and accounts department indian audits and account accounts department it was the head it is the head of this particular body next what is the like the cog is mentioned in the constitution so that is the article from 140 148 to 151 now who appoints the cog the comptroller and auditor general of india is appointed by the president of india following a recommendation by the prime minister with the recommendation of prime minister the cog will be appointed by president on appointment he or she has to make an oath or affirmation before the president what are the duties of the cog so like a, he should check the receipts and expenditure from the consolidated fund, consolidated fund of india and of the state and union territory having a legislative assembly trading manufacturing profit and loss accounts and balance sheets and other subsidiary accounts kept in any government department next government companies as per the provisions of the companies act 2013 and if there are any grants and loans given by government to bodies and authorities for specific purposes and that will that will also under cog so it is interested audits so the one more duty is interested audits like example those of panchayati raj institutions and urban local bodies under technical guidance and support and those are also under cog now and the next come to the nfsa so it is what national food security act so 2013 so with an objective to provide for food and nutritional security food and nutritional security in human life cycle approach by ensuring access to adequate quantity of quality food at affordable prices to people live a life with a dignity and this act provides for coverage up to 75 percent of the rural population and up to 50 percent of urban population for receiving subsidized food grains under tpds targeted public distribution system so thus it covering about two-third of the population so finally it is covering the two-third of the population and the eligible persons will be entitled to entitled to receive five kgs of food grains per person per month at a subsidized prices of three rupees two rupees one rupee per kg for rice wheat and coarse grains so like a maize bajra so jover so these are some are coarse grains and the existing anchodeya anayojana anchodeya anayojana households which constitute the poorest of the poor will continue to receive 35 kgs of food grains per household per month and and here these are the exceptions from this like uh, uh, getting the subsidized rupees like a 5 kgs of rice these persons will get a 335 kgs of rice per household per month and this is what uh, the main features of the nfsa means national food security act so the act also has a special focus on the nutritional support to women and children so besides meal to pregnant women and lactate uh, lactating mothers during pregnancy and six months after the childbirth such women will also be entitled to receive maternity benefit of not less than six thousand rupees under nfsa and children up to 14 years of age will be entitled to nutrients nutrients meals as per the prescribed prescribed nutritional standards in case of for example non-supply of entitled food grains or meals the beneficiaries will receive food security allowance and this is about completely and about a cog and nfsa so today's questions are COG audits the expenditure from so option A consolid consolidated fund of India contingency fund of India so both A and B none of the above try to answer this question so we'll see in the next uh, uh, video we'll see the explanation and all for it 
and the second one which of the following country used the option nota for the first time already we have discussed it we try to answer this one no so this is our so link so youtube link so you can get access or you can get this particular video along with a material so which is very relevant to this particular video and in this particular link and this is what telegram link so you can you can join into this particular channel and you can access the same youtube so this video and material so thank you guys so we'll meet again in the next video thank you